Hello everyone and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. It is a special video today as it is sponsored by Thrustmaster and a huge thanks to them for sending me over their brand new T248 wheel. This is a hybrid wheel, uh, so it has not only a belt in it, but it does have a gear in there. So not only are you gonna get the T248, the new wheel uh, that has a little digital display here and stuff, it's uh, not only this in the package, but also the new T3PM pedals that are replacing the T3PAs we're gonna be using as well. You know me, we're not a big, crazy unboxing channel, but I did wanna show you the pedals before I get them mounted on here, but they are a lot higher quality than the previous versions of them for sure. And I've noticed that it's got a little bit of that kind of tension in the brake, like the TLCM. So I'm excited to try them out. Let's get going in this episode. All right, folks, we are in American Truck Simulator right now, and we are picking up a tub grinder. We're going to be taking down the coast of Oregon today, something a little bit different than what we normally do. And we're going to go through the T248 and what you can expect from a wheel like this. It's a package and we're going to go into detail about the pricing, when it will be available, and everything that is included with it all and what you can do with it. And it's a pretty cool wheel. It's something I've never used before. It's gonna take some getting used to, to you know, jump from my TSPC racer I was using before over to the T248. And we'll see if it throws us off too much, which I'm so far pretty impressed with the wheel. Uh, it is cheaper than the one I was using before. I mean, considering, you know, the price point is going to be the same for the combined pedal and wheel setup rather than just a wheel base. And then you have to buy rims on top of that. Well, you can't change out the rims on this guy. And there's a reason for that. If you're wondering what truck we're using, we're using John Ruda's beautiful classic XL today to pick this up. I think we really screwed this up. I need to come way over to the, the left here. There we go. And one of the coolest things about the wheel is that you can actually change the force feedback settings on it on the fly in in game while you're playing, which is something I've never seen before. It's actually really, really neat. Um, let's roll our windows down here. See what the heck we got going on, shall we? They know I need to get over to the left here a little bit more. All right, we're almost to it. And those awesome Z mod sounds of the 3406E. There we go, we're, we're almost to it now. I think I have my force feedback setting a little too high than what I'm used to. So it's kind of throwing me off just a hair. Let's back it on up. We're almost there to it, man. This is a little tough spot right here to pick up. There we go, you gotta kind of Austin Powers it in there. <laughs> there we go, much better. Happy Friday to all of you guys. I hope you're having a great week so far. And you're almost there. We've almost made it to the weekend, haven't we? Almost. All right, a little bit more to the left, it looks like. This is a little bit of a challenge to pick up today. Wasn't expecting it. There we go. Just more to the left here. And we'll be all right. I think we're in there now if we just kind of come this way. Should be pretty close to picking that up. Nailed it. Wonderful. We'll couple it up. And it is good to go. We can close that window now. And parking brake is out. All that's good. We're going to get going down the road and talk about the T248. This is a heavy haul, so this is going to be a, an interesting one. So this is, this is the uh, T248, and it has THD. What is THD? It's the new hybrid drive system they have come out with. Now, what it is is basically a belt system and a gear system together. So... You can adjust it directly on the wheel, like I talked about. Um, it has optical reading in it. It is 70% more powerful than, say, a T150, a TMX motor that you would be used to if you're trying to figure out what this wheel would bring to the table that uh, you, know, you already have. Does it? 96 watts of peak power in two seconds. 48 watts of constant debit power, if you're wondering. And then the race dash dash display. That's what this thing is here. We're going to go through the little modes of it. I can go into my mode button here and I can go through by going up and down on the little D-pad here. You have about the base and go into that. Shows you all that stuff. Now, keep in mind, there it is, T3PA. <laughs> Doing this while driving a truck down the road with a motion platform. Um, T3PA pedals is not what I'm using. I'm using the 
the new T3 PMs, which we'll talk about those too. Um, so that's just like an about section. Here's the force feedback one. So I can come to that. You see force feedback two there on the display. That's what it comes at default. Now I can go up and down and I can make it uh, something different here if I want to. So I can go into force feedback three, two, one. I'm gonna knock it down to one. It seems a little too high for me right now. So that works. You can change the rotation on the fly. So I have 900 degrees of rotation, but you can change that on the fly, which is really cool. So I'm not gonna mess with that stuff. Let's get out of mode section here for a second. We're making a right turn up here. So 48 watts of constant debit power. I think I covered that one. Okay, man, geez, this road, I am ready to be off it. But the race dash display, that's what we're gonna talk about next. That's the telemetry data and options. Now in American Truck Sim currently, keep in mind this wheel hasn't even been announced by Thrustmaster yet. Like this is so behind the scenes new and they gave me permission to show it to you guys so early on that they don't even have all this ready to go for American Truck Sim. It will be whenever it is released. Come on, go into the gear, please. Thank you. You know what? It's not in the right, uh, I don't have my upper range for some reason on my, let me figure that out. All right, I think we have it now. All good to go. It, yeah, I didn't have it uh, work in there for a second. It wasn't like using my, it wasn't jumping down. I don't know what it's doing right now. It's being kind of stupid. There we go and jump it back into here. There, now we're in fifth. Okay, cool. So the race dash display is not 100% working yet. Um, I can hit display and I can change those modes right there if I would like on the fly. Um, so you can see the rev limit here. So it shows you the RPM. It is actually giving me correct data on that. So that's cool. That is actually working. They told me it wouldn't be working at all. So I'm actually impressed that it is. I had no clue. Um, you could change between uh, that speed. The speed is working. Look at that. We have a speed limit on the display right there. That is pretty cool. Oh, here comes the rain. Doot and doo doo. So I'm just kind of showing you a little bit here. First impressions of the wheel. We're going to go into detail over this because we're going to be using this for the next uh, couple weeks, a few, a few weeks. So if you're still holding on to see what my opinion is on it, uh, you can do exactly that. I'm just telling you right now what my initial impressions are and some of the data uh, that was given to me about the wheel that uh, I know for the most part. So we can change all that stuff out. Cool. You can turn display mode off if you would like um, and get back out of that one there. Let's just stay in sixth here. We're going to be climbing this hill pretty good here. I like that we have a working speedometer and it is accurate. That is cool. All right. So we can change that. So we now go into the RPM, uh, DRI. I'm not really sure what that one is or PBL. And then that's the gear selection there, but that doesn't translate yet. So that's one of the ones that it doesn't do. I'll keep it on speed for now though. I like that. Making a left turn up here. Sweet. Turn that uh, mode off. We're good. All right. So that's pretty cool. After now, I can honestly tell you the left. only difference I saw between the new T3 PM pedals and what I was using before, which was the, um, turn left. I was using the TLCMs, which are the load cell pedals, but the M uh, has that magnetic as well. So to me, it feels like the default spring it comes with is a little looser than what I'm used to, but it did come with an extra set of springs. There's four different adjustments you can make on those pedals. And I find that to be, uh, it's not far off. Honestly, if you look at the construction of the pedals between these and the TLCMs, uh, the TLCMs, I mean, has a load cell in it, obviously that's, you know, that's the difference. Okay. Why is this not working? Why are you not wanting to go? Okay. Very strange. Um, with that being said, the construction of the actual pieces are plastic rather than the metal, if you're wondering about that. But we'll talk a little bit about those T3 PMs, the new ones. I did a whole video on the TLCMs. If you guys want to check that out, just Google it. It'll pop up. I guarantee it. Yeah, something is uh, amiss here. So whenever I had to uninstall my old drivers and the new drivers for this, I lost all my settings. So bear with me. We'll get it all working again sometime soon. I just have to like click very it strange. twice, which is very strange. I never have that. Anywho, so the magnetic pedals are uh, using that heart technology that you know and love from Thrustmaster. Okay, 
I don't think I can float that. Is that not floating? Is that what's happening here? No, it's working. Okay. Uh, it has four adjustable settings, like I said, and it does include those brake springs, so you can change them out for a stiffer one, which I think is great because, personally, that's more for me, for sure. Now, the pedals, or the uh, paddles, not pedals, but paddles on the back here, they're, they have an extremely positive, like, click, and the reason for that is because they are magnetic. They have the heart technology in them and a, uh, a magnetic spring effect that happens, and when I use it for my blinkers like this, it's so powerful and you can feel it. It's it's a very sati very satisfying click. I must say, one of the best feelings I've ever had on any wheel, hands down, that I've ever tried. That's pretty impressive. So this is a next gen wheel. You know, they're, they're keeping in mind uh, that portion of it. And uh, for that, being a, you know, with it being a next gen wheel, there's four customizable encoders. These little paddle switches here on the side. These little guys will change between the different encoders, so you can change everything out all you would like. There's so much customiz customization on this wheel, it's actually crazy. You can have up to 25 buttons, which is really nice. I just, I've only programmed these couple ones here just for my windows. See, I can open my window and close my window. Same thing over there. Yeah, same. Same deal. Hello, Newport. Sorry, it's raining. Wish it wasn't raining, but it is. So, let's talk a little bit more about the wheel before we continue on with our drive. Uh, it is compatible with the PS5, the PS4, and PC. Obviously, I'm using a PC version, and I can hit the, uh, the button and change between that option on the fly as well. Uh, so the, the ability to change everything you have here in the wheel is pretty crazy at your fingertips. So the pre-orders are going to launch on August 31st. Use that shake break here. Don't use that Jake in the rain, boy! Don't you do it! I'm going to use that Jake in the rain today. Don't you worry about it. So pre-orders will be launching August 31st. Now let's talk about the price point of it. It's going to be... It's only a combined wheel and pedal set. I haven't seen that this is gonna be uh, released by itself without the pedals. So you're looking at $399.99. So 400 bucks for the for the whole shebang. Now, you could pay that in a, in a wheelbase alone without the pedals as well. So the launch date is uh, gonna be in, I think, October 21st, 2021. Go straight. Go straight. You got it. The actual launch date. So, initial impressions. This thing is small, man. I'm used to my TSPC Racer, which is big. Uh, I'm used to my big, massive wheel, my rim. Now, the only cons so far is there's a couple of them that I can tell you about. The mounting options is this big, bulky little piece that kind of goes under, which works for a lot of a lot of situations. For me and my uh, next level racing GT track, I use. It was a little more difficult to mount it to this because I couldn't do it hard mounted with the bolts. Now, Keep I right. could if I got some longer bolts for it. It didn't include any hard mounting uh, kit, but that's not on Thrustmaster. That's on the, the next level racing. I just have to find my box full of all those, get a longer bolt, and then it'll actually go up in there and mount. But I got to say, you know, I used the, the, the included little paddle mount here. And uh, it, it's pretty darn good. It's got like this little cutout thing that comes out to the side with two little things in the back that are nice and flat. And I gotta say, the whole thing doesn't move around on me at all. So I was very impressed with that. All right, let's go into seven. There we go. Look how beautiful that is right there. Nice. I know I'm gonna rattle in a lot of information off in this, but I do wanna be as thorough as I possibly can about this because I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this wheel since there's no information out there on it. And, and Thrustmaster has just been such an amazing sponsor for me over the years that uh, they were like, you know, only I think only like 20 something people got this wheel globally as an early access to show off. So here we are. Um, the outer edge is a pleather. It's not like a leather I, that I can feel. I don't think it's a real leather. I think it's pleather. And then underneath here is plastic. And this is like a real cheap plastic little ribbon piece right here. Now, the only con that I can see for me is that I can't change out the wheelbase. It doesn't have that whole, you know, straight. the ecosystem where you can change out rims. So what you get is what you get. 
but it was probably difficult to, you know, transfer all this data in and out without, you know, in, in being able to change your RAM out. So I can see why with the next gen digital dash and all that stuff, uh, why that would be the case. So I'm not going to knock it too hard. Uh, so that is one of the biggest things. It's it's tiny and like the the base is so small, but so powerful. Like it's insane. Like we hit those bumps there and it went on me. Um, it's very powerful. And the base is small, which is great for people that are using you know, a PS4, or PS5, whatever. Um, but for a PC, it's a little bit different. It's, it's a little, it feels small, light, and cheap because it is a cheaper wheelbase. Now, with that said, it does have um, an advantage because maybe you don't have a lot of room on your desk, you know? And if you're worried about a mounting option, this thing is so small and doesn't take up so, that much room on the on the desk at all that you're gonna be good to go. So the pedals, they get uh, an Ethernet port style plug in on the back or underneath there. It does come with a little uh, little cable management that you would kind of uh, see, similar to like you know the Hotas one and things like that with their products. And then it has a Velcro little uh, piece there so you can do some cable management underneath there. I didn't have any issues with that. That was perfectly fine. The now plug it into the wall. It's got a pretty small little power uh, brick. I was expecting something bigger because my TSPC Eraser has this massive like turbo like an actual model of a turbo off a car and it's really heavy and bulky and it's always in the way. Now this was super easy to plug into the wall. So that I have to give them credits for that. Okay, wipers off. We don't need those on anymore. We got through the rainstorm. How realistic is that though? We're, oh, thanks dude. Pulling out in front of me like that. 35, yeah, we're not gonna worry about that. But man, I love having that digital dash on here. That's cool. That is, uh, that's something that you know, you're not gonna get with the other other ones. But I mean, it's, it's a matter of this wheel the wheel does feel a little cheapy plastic -y, like, you know, kind of like a lot of the, the default ones that you get. So there is that, but it's also at that price point. I don't think a lot of people are going to really care for that because I think if you're wanting to get metal pieces and all that stuff, you're going to look at the TSPC racer and things like that. But you know what? Initial impressions. So I will let you know over the next few weeks, we're going to be using this in America Truck Sim and really putting it through its paces, not only this and also the pedal set. So I'm gonna give you a longer, like the longer time I have with it, I'll be able to say more or less what I like and what I don't like about it. What I do like is the functionality. That hands down is win. And I love all the buttons uh, that we have on the actual wheel to use. That's actually really nice. If you don't have a button box, because I have an ASP heavy hauler button box. If you don't have one of those, you can really set all that stuff up here with Jake Brake. You know, that'd be pretty cool to just, you know, be able to hit the button for that. That's, uh, that's really nice for that. Lights on. Yep. Coming down the mountain now. I know I'm kind of taking it easy, but that's okay. What a week it has been. Enough talking about the wheel. I think you guys got it, right? <laughs> You definitely got it. All right, a little bit more to the right here. Um, apart from that, it's been uh, it's been one hell of a week, man. It really has. Okay, let's use our Jake brake coming down the hill here. I can change that level of Jake that I'm using. Make it lighter. There we go. Listen to that. We're gonna open these windows up so we can listen to this thing. There we go. 35 up the hill. You got it. Roll our windows back up. Getting used to a little smaller wheel. I'm used to that big, massive 18 inch wheel. Which something I would love to do is get a uh, SCI wheel and mount it on my TSPC racer. That big, huge, like, like an actual 22 inch one. Cause I know the base can handle it. No problem. Oh, that's beautiful right there. But yeah, the week has been uh, been hectic. We had, you know, Dave and his girlfriend Taylor in uh, in town with us. 
and they're visiting. We've had an absolute blast. Our friends moved in. I, don't, I talked about this in a different video, but for those of you that watched the American Truck Sim, we'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, they moved in this week, so that was a lot of fun. We've been helping them out, get them, you know, on their feet, and uh, they feel comfortable. Because you know, when you move out of state, it's just if you've been through it before, it's definitely different. It's not. You're never really prepared for it. So when you have friends that are there for you, it really helps. And so we're trying to be that for them. So it's been a lot of that. And then I had a ton of like just sponsorships out of the blue, uh, sponsored videos of games that I would already cover. So I'm like, that's the thing. If I, if something across comes across my email that I'm like, you know what? I will play that game regardless. That's a, a game that I will do a sponsored video on American truck sim. It's a no brainer. Uh, it's it's a new wheel for us to check out and talk about, you know, because there's a lot of options out there when it comes to wheels. And here's another one. Right, slow on down here. Don't want to get in an accident. It's 20 through here. It's weird because I can see the speedometer in the truck, but when I look on, I look here. It's so much faster to, to reference your speed off of this. That's weird. I wouldn't expect that. Don't you. I don't know what that was about, dude. We didn't have a light or anything. They just were like, nope, not for me. Gotta watch these people around here, man. They're crazy. Absolutely nuts. A lot of uh, other things going on, you know. NASCAR 21 Ignition dropped their gameplay trailer, and I was gonna do a breakdown for that, but I'm like, I just don't have time to to put into, uh, into that right now, because when I do a video on that, I, I really try to not, uh, why are you doing that? weird there we go third gear will work um i try not to just speculate and stuff I, I find all the information i can and compile that into a video like that but i'm very excited for it there's some things that look a little wonky and weird but we won't know until we actually have gameplay raw gameplay of it which they said they were going to do if the video got to like a thousand likes which i'm pretty sure it did there we go just knock stuff off my desk that's how I roll. But they did reach out to me, Motorsports Games, and I will be covering that this year. I'm excited for that. I can't give you more details about it, but yes, I will be playing it on the channel and I will be covering it. So I'm just like you guys, I'm very excited for it. Um, but I'm not, I don't have such hype that it's like ridiculous, you know, like uh, it's like it's not something that uh, is feasible. Because we don't want to go down that path before. And we got to be very realistic about NASCAR uh, 21 Ignition because they had to build the game up from the ground up, you know? Had to be completely rebuilt. Let's do some outside view action of this truck because this is such a beautiful truck. doing so good and then I missed that one shift <laughs> kind of difficult when you're in the outside view you can't really see it too much and we get some evening driving in here I haven't had that in a while a little bit longer of a trip than I was thinking it was going to be that's okay though I do love driving this truck and I'm getting used to the wheel now I, after this much time with it this is the most I have I haven't tried it at all like literally plugged it in and we're making a video on it here so you have my actual first impressions of it. So it's not just, uh, hey, you know what? I believe, what is going on here? Why are you doing this? Can you go into, yeah, first gear, please? Thank you. Missed that one big time. Yeah, we gotta be getting close. Make sure it don't come over that line there. I think we're getting on the highway up here. It looks like. So yeah, we only got about, what, 20 something minutes with it. And I'm just getting used to the the size of it. That's really the difference there that I'm noticing. But other than that, like the feel of it, it's, it's you know, there's a lot going on. I could feel the road and the engine, but that could just be stuff that got reset whenever I went into the input wizard and, and redid the controls. Is it, uh, is it gonna replace my TSPC racer? Absolutely not. I can tell you that right now from what I'm, I'm feeling. And the pedals, I like them. 
Like, I, I really do. I think that I will put that other spring in there to make them a little stiffer. But they're really nice. Like, and, and they blow away the T3 PAs. Remember those. Because it had that, like, pendular style pedal on it. This has more of a adding pressure to the brake, kind of like the TLCM, but you're just applying pressure onto the brake spring, you know? But I like it. It's not throwing me off. Like, it's... The braking and the acceleration stuff has not been a problem. It's just been me getting my shifter all reset again on me. That's been the only one that's caught us out a little bit here. All right. Let's do a little bit of, uh, while we're in traffic here, let's see what it'll go into third gear. There you go. While we're here into first, let's go into the display and we'll change it to RPM so you can read that. And you see how fast I can change that on the fly. Really cool. So she idles at about 600 RPM, it looks like. See that? 601, actually. You get to see it in real time, us go through our gears. And finally, let's talk about Wyoming, September 7th. It is almost here, folks. They haven't contacted me yet. I'm pretty positive. I, well, I, mean, I usually have it. Oh, you didn't go into gear, buddy. You didn't go into gear, buddy. Nope, that's not the right gear. That's not the right gear. Come on, get in the fifth. There you go. So for some weird reason, whenever I went in and got all my controls redone, now I have to hit the button twice on my shifter instead of once to jump into, you know, to split the gear or once to jump into the ranges. That's what's throwing me off. I have to hit it twice now, which is really dumb. You normally don't have to do that, but whatever. Um, but Wyoming is almost here, man. And I haven't gotten the email yet, but I'm sure very soon they're gonna allow me to have some early access to it. They did contact me earlier uh, this year about it. So I'm excited for it, man. And you know, it's another state by SES. And we're gonna have so much Oh, there goes the train. And apparently I heard SES uh, redid the train sound. Somebody told me. So that's interesting. But we're going to have so much to explore. You know, the long run, like that Wyoming is going to be so great. And then when we get Texas, honestly, if you really want my opinion, I don't care if we ever get another state. If we get to Texas and then all of that western side, that's more than enough. Now, I know people are gonna be like, no, don't say that, don't say that. I think that that would be fine for American Truck Sim as a whole. Now, let's talk a little bit something I, I do wanna talk about, and that is kind of the direction of gaming. It's a little bit different now, you know? Before, you used to have games that would come out like, a, you know, Euro Truck Simulator, Euro Truck Simulator 2. And then people are like, well, why aren't we gonna get American Truck Simulator 2? Because they're able to push out updates, you know? And that's kind of how gaming has been has become over the years is you don't get a lot of games that are like this two, this three, this four, this five, because that's usually back in the day whenever they would push them out onto consoles on a, you know, on a, or, or a game disc or sorry, 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 uh, a big game disc or something like that. Sorry, Jake break here. They couldn't really update the games like you can now digitally. So to me, that's just the reason why we may not see an American Truck Simulator 2 or they're gonna get to Texas and go, okay, that's it. Let's go to America Truck Sim 2. And then people be like, well, why would you do that? Um, for a new game engine, the whole game engine needs to be redone. You know, next gen game engines that are out there. I know this game looks gorgeous and it's beautiful. It's amazing, but man, there's gonna be so much advancement in gaming technology to come. But that's kind of the reason why we don't see a whole lot of that happening. good over there how much further we have on this trip we've got uh 210 miles so we're getting closer but man it's going down this little section here has been interesting because that is a heavy trailer it's 60,000 pounds which i know that's not like horrible or anything like that okay why are you slowing down that much damn that truck scared the hell out of me there come on let's get this thing into fifth gear there we go 
Get our bright lights back on again. Although you have to take it easy down the hill. You do. I'm gonna keep it for my Jake brake all the way down there to low. There we go. So I can use it when I need to. I know cars, I know I'm going slow. Nice turn coming up here. Just keeping an eye on it. Keep the jakes on, though. That's a pretty mean turn right here. That turned out pretty darn good right there. So, yeah, whenever I play... I know, I know, cop. I have my rights on. When I play with a wheel, I, I don't like to have the feeling of the engine or the road like in the actual wheel. And the road's okay, but the engine, I always turn that off in the wheel. I don't like that artificial canned effect of it shaking the wheel. And it's doing that by default right now. So I need to go back in and turn that off. In the higher RPMs, it does it. So display, change that out again. We'll go back to our options of the speed. There we go. And hit display again. Wonderful stuff. Now we're snaking down this hill. Be dropping off probably in the early morning, I would imagine, after this. And yes, I know about John Rudis, new Peterbilt. All that stuff is still in the back burner, man. I have so many video projects, which is crazy. I usually have a little more, you know, freedom with uh, creativity when it comes to different videos the wrong button there. I'm about to use that. And uh, it's been a lot of, uh, I mean, in a good way, it's been a lot of good, different stuff. So I do plan on covering those trucks and stuff. And I know Z Mods got, has a new engine mod out as well. So I will get to that stuff. I do promise you that. Go straight. All right, we're gonna go straight. Nobody's coming yet on the bridge, so we're good. We'll keep our bright lights on for now. Hunter Creek is where we're at. Such a beautiful truck, man. John Ruta's Classic XL is just one of my favorite trucks. Like, I love a Peterbilt 379. It's my favorite truck, like, of all time. But there's something about the Classic XL, man. It's just such a great truck. And I'm sure there's an update for it that I don't own yet. I'm pretty bad at updating my trucks, to be honest with you. Sometimes I just forget about it. Use all that there. Let's listen to this beautiful sound set by Z Mods here as we go down this hill. It sounds so good. It really does. jamming man it's so good sorry truck trying to be able to see here what I'm doing somebody on the side of the road there broke down that's not good made it to California Ag culture station here. Listen to how amazing that sounds. 
Nothing like it, man. It's so good. So good. You would think that that is a lime green charger. And you would be correct. Interesting, interesting. All right. Let's go ahead and hit enter on this guy. You can do their inspection. You may continue driving. Okay, bye bye. Love you. car here with the camper. I'm going to wait for them to get on the highway. Fucking right behind him here. God, that sounds so good. I missed that. Nope, because it did that thing again on me. Okay. I have to click it twice. All right, let's roll up our windows here. Got to, it's always nice to just kind of kick back and just listen to the sound of the engine and the game all together because it's just something absolutely amazing. I love it. It's the, it's kind of like my uh, my new meditation, America Truck Sim is. You put a head, VR headset on, you just kind of just zone out by going down the road. But back to what I was saying before I got on my tangent about gaming and the difference of, you know, having a two or whatever, is that I don't think that they're gonna make it with every single state. 50 states in this engine is just, I, I just don't see it happening. I think that's gonna take another couple years or more to even get there. So they might come out with a America Truck Simulator 2, which would be on a new engine and that would make sense. Or maybe they'll just keep updating what they have. I really don't know. but I am just gonna be absolutely stoked when we have Wyoming and Texas. And those are coming down the line. We're gonna have Wyoming very soon. And that's gonna be such an expanse north of Colorado. Just those two states alone, you're gonna have so much driving, which is gonna be so cool. I'll tell you what though, I say this every single time I use Z mods. Every single time I say, wow, SES needs to hire this guy. If SES could hire him, your default trucks could sound like this. Your default trucks. There's nothing wrong with the default trucks. They are great trucks and they look good and everything, but man, their sounds are so lacking and just not good. Just plain not good. And these guys just mod it so well. Another video I want you guys to go check out because I'm sure I'll get questions about the new International LT that's been teased in all the new uh, trailers and the, and the pictures and stuff is on uh, Full Tilt Gaming's channel on YouTube, FTG. He, uh, he does state of the sim kind of uh, style videos, which are really nice and engaging. I really enjoy them. Uh, you know, keeps me up to date on things maybe I missed and that, uh, you know, it's, it's coming in the, in, the, in the next few months. But go check out that. Oh, hello. No texture on that guy. Go check that video out. I'll have his uh, channel linked in the description below. Actually, I'll, yeah, I'll just link you to that channel if you want to go check it out in that video. Because that will be nice. Look at that Peter Loki playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't know if that pops up for you or not. If, that, if it did, it does. But if it doesn't... Uh, I can tell you, Peter Loki has, was the second subscriber of my channel of all, like, from the very beginning, back in the day. Crazy, I know. But it is true. He was the second subscriber to the channel. The first one was Ross. Arkin, and I haven't heard from uh, Ross in years and years and years. And back in the day, <clears throat> it was like in 2016, I think, right around there. I don't know if I've ever told anybody this, but... Uh, he was my very first subscriber of all across the board because YouTube does give you that data. And uh, Ross was, um, you know, he was every, he's there every video, there every video, every, every video. And he's just, he's, he's still around. I just rarely ever get to talk to him. Um, but 
I ended up taking my AKG because I had a, when I started my channel, I had an AKG Perception 220 mic and it got hit by lightning, the house did, and it fried the whole circuitry on it. So it was a dead mic. So what I ended up doing was I signed it and I sent him a handwritten letter uh, to his house just to thank him for, you know, for subscribing as long as he had and being part of that whole thing. It's special when you have a person that was still around at the time, you know, that was there from the very beginning. The first subscriber to the channel. So I did send him that. He has my original microphone that I started everything with. It will be worth absolutely nothing, I can tell you that, but maybe sentimental value. Because it, because uh, Ross uh, means a lot to me. Get around here. We're getting closer. I'm telling you what, we're gonna be there before you know it. I know it's gonna be a longer video, but you know what? That's not gonna hurt anybody's feelings because I've been getting a lot of requests for American Truck Sim again, and I'm like, I know. I know, and I need to jump back in and play the Outback map because it got a huge update, including the correct color of the dirt. He changed the color of the dirt and the uh, effects behind the dirt or under the dirt or the, you know, what I mean. It was a lot more red and true to what you would see. He also redid uh, Cool Addy uh, and then he's working on a bunch of other stuff, new assets and all that stuff. So that's really cool. All right. You know, one thing that would be really cool with these new trucks that are coming out, you know, that technology is there for the auto headlights, the auto brights. I don't think that would be very difficult to model in because it would just know if a car was coming, was on coming towards the truck at night at a certain distance and then it would automatically change those just like a real one. Now, mind you, I don't know if they have that in semi trucks currently. I know my truck has it, my 2017 Ram, it has that, so it's possible. Just because they don't, you know, use it very often doesn't mean anything. Thought I clicked that, I didn't. All right, climb it, climb it, climb it, buddy. Let's drop it into seven low here. I love the little sound of the keys and stuff moving around whenever you're going around a tight turn. That's a little attention to detail. So. Let's talk a little bit more about what I have going on. I got my SP Heavy Hauler. You're seeing that chair moving, rocking back and forth. My whole rig is Next Level Racing's GT track. And uh, that is attached to the motion rig underneath there. It's the Motion Platform V3 by Next Level Racing. Keep shaking down this hill here. too fast so that's why that moves around all the time and then my shifter setup is the Thrustmaster TH8A shifter and then I have Southern Trucker Gaming's 10 inch extension rod on the top of that and then it goes into uh, Southern Trucker Gaming's Eaton Fuller am I right no sorry I thought I had my rights on uh, the Eaton Fuller 18 speed shifter on the top of that so I have the real deal that's why sometimes you'll see it in the in the corner. I need to get a better camera angle for showing that. Uh, I need to get one that like off the back and then more downward. So I know that's something I do want to do. I plan to do it eventually. And finally today, the last thing I want to talk about is my MCN is dissolving. They, they we got bought out years ago. So if you don't know, oh, we have a way station. Cool. If you don't know, we have, I, I'm, I've been with Machinima since like 2014. And you, I know people are like, Machinima sucks, blah, 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 blah. They, this is, this is after all of that. It was after they like had rebranded, they had new people, all that stuff. So you can save those comments. Turn I've left. never had an issue with them ever. And I've been with them for left. a very long time. Um, but we, they got bought out by Warner Brothers at the time and all that. And then I've gone through a bunch of these different companies that bought us. And uh, one was Fullscreen. I've been with Fullscreen for a while since they bought them out. Well, Fullscreen just is dumping everybody. So that really sucks to see it. But vehicle's not in perfect little technical state. Be careful next time. Okay, we'll try. 
So they are uh, dissolving and they're they're going out. They're going bye 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 bye. Freeway entrance to the left here, Jeff. I was gonna go down to nowhere. Spill that would have been no good. Make sure we get around that without hitting anything. So at the end of October, it will be the final time with them. Getting on the highway, buddy. Thank you. You let us on. That was really nice of him to say thank you for that one. Climb this hill here first. That dude's got a lot of off-road lights. So I have a meeting with uh, with them soon uh, to talk about stuff, and then. I'll let you know a little bit more of what happens after that. I don't know if I'm going to go with another MCN. I love MCNs because, I mean, well, I don't like the fact that, you know, you get only so much whatever of your split is, but I've I had good negotiations. I, I don't have a bad situation there at all. But apart from that, uh, the sound libraries and stuff. So I'm just going to have to buy a new license for Epidemic Sounds. I love Epi Epidemic Sounds. I'm going to use them uh, again. So I just have to buy a license for that. I have one for Twitch. I got a free one through my MCN full screen currently. So all the songs that you know and love that we use here on the channel, uh, that's the reason why I'm able to use them. That Jake break here, 55. We are in California, man. And it's not gonna change. Going through Eureka. We gotta be getting close, man. Gotta be getting close. Yep, 16 miles is our exit here. So it doesn't change anything for you. It just changes things for me. I might have to go to Google AdSense, which I already have anyway, because you have to have it with the MCNs. If you don't know what an MCN is, it's a multi-channel right. network. After 50 yards, turn right. Turn right. Let's roll these windows down. Listen to this truck roaring into town here. Turn right. And I'm sure they don't like the fact that we're using a Jake brake in a tiny town of Eureka here in the night. Guarantee you that one. Ought to be daytime. I mean, you can see that it's about to be daytime here shortly. Slow down, slow down. I don't want to run in the back of this guy. So that's been going on with me. So, uh, again, there we go. Get that back into, into gear. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens with it, but I'll let you know. I'm, I'm very transparent about everything on this channel and everything we've gone through over the years. Uh, I'm not a doom and gloomer when it comes to changes within a YouTube platform or an MCN or something like that. I've been through it all before, man. It's no different. It's just change. That's all. this corner here and nobody's in this lane so we get to just steal this lane nice climb it climb it climb it I know it's a hell of a hill man you got it come on you got it come on don't do this don't you son of a wouldn't have had this problem before but man had to use low low right there. Get into gear, dude. I'm having real issues with this uh, this shifter options. I don't know why it's being stupid, but it is today. I was like, I did not want to be that slow on that hill right there. That was bad. All right, the drop's up here. Get this thing up to speed so we can hit that Jake break and just enjoy it. Bridge we go. Here we go. Use our Jake. This is where we're dropping, really, this place? Not a lot here, to be perfectly honest with you, when it comes to options. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just... 
block the road, basically. You have reached your destination. Yeah, we're gonna back it in right there. So I'm gonna use all of this to do it. This huge lot right here is gonna be perfect for us. If the windows rolled down, so I mean we're there's not enough room to back this thing in the other way, so oh well. Oh well. All right, there's pretty good. Go on back. Make sure that car doesn't try to pull up on us there. I mean, an idiot. Nobody's coming from that way either. Yeah, come on back with it. Yeah, honk all you want. Just don't pull up into my trailer. That's all I'm asking. Honk. We're good. See that car right there. Straighten it a little bit here to the right. And on back we go. Yeah, he, he gave us room for this. That was nice of him. They usually don't do that, so that's really nice to see. Let it keep on fading back. There we go. Honk. We have to clear this gate over here, so just keep it coming. Oh, yeah, we're going to be fine on that. That worked out just fine in our favor. Keep coming back with it. Don't want to slap the gate yet. We're good. A little flatter here. Thank you. We're good. No sloppy steaks, guys. No sloppy steaks. Oh, dude, I think we nailed this drop. We nailed this back. That's what I'm talking about. Get the whole rig straight now. I don't have to bright this guy either. We can just turn our secondary lights on. Dude, look at that. Nailed this drop. Some days you have it and some days you don't. Today, folks, we had it perfect. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. That never happens. That never, ever happens. This is going to be a good day. That's a, that's a good sign to a good day right there. Wow, we did it, folks. I'll tell you what. Hot damn. Let's go ahead and detach the trailer and see what we ended up with here. Did we get an excellent? I'm sure we did. Job completed excellent. 398 miles, three, 13 hours, 13 minutes, 85.5 gallons of fuel consumed. Longer video than usual, but I don't think anybody's going to be upset with that. That's going to do it for this episode of American Truck Simulator. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. And also, what are your impressions of the T248? We're going to keep using it, and uh, we'll see what we feel at the end of the trial run with it. Uh, that'll do it. See you next time. Take care. I often get asked, Jeff, do you have any merch? And the answer is yes. You can check out the link in the description, or you can just click right here on this video and it will take you to the merch store. Thank you so much for all the love and support. I do appreciate it, guys.